So what you're about to listen to or watch is our predictions episode. Now, we made a mistake, kind of, because we recorded it at the end of November. Oftentimes, that doesn't matter. You make predictions for the next year, and you're, you're not very good, so they don't come true anyway, and they certainly don't come true in December, except for this year, right? Yeah, um, you may have some fun picking out during the show which predictions we really didn't think would come true by December 15th, but <laughs> at the time of recording, a few have. So yes. it'd be like a Where's Waldo of predictions. Hey, that one's true. We Listen, always joke just, around with the idea that that we're re that we're doing these things live, but we never make a secret that they're pre-recorded. Yeah, and uh, I would say save uh, some of that eggnog, and you can make a game out of it with uh, mm. some friends and family. With that, enjoy our 2018 predictions episode. Happy New Year! Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com/support. Welcome to our end of year Daily Tech News 2018 predictions episode from DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Fila and at the beach, I am Sarah Lane. Joining us, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Where are you? Oh, well, back here in Oakland, California, the news capital of the world. Ah, and we also have from the far north, Jen Cutter. Where are you? I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And in the mountains, the beautiful mountains, or at least near them, Scott Johnson. We have snow there, but not down here. And it's great to be here, Tom. And from lovely Burbank, California, it's Roger Chang. That's right. I live in Burbank. Or <laughs> close to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, hey, uh, we are, it's the end of the year. What a year 2017 has been, especially December. I can't believe all the crazy things that happened in December. Uh, but we're not here to talk about the past. Uh, we are here to talk about the future. This is our prognostication episode, Sarah. It, did, did you miss doing this? Did you miss laying your reputation on the line every year with predictions? Yeah. Well, the fun thing about predictions is like, you, 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 t you take them as seriously as you can, but nothing bad happens to you if you're wrong, because no. who can predict anything really? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it, it's, it, so it, yeah, it's like, I, I used to, we used to do this uh, when we all did TNT and, um, and yeah, it was always fun. And like, you kind of get wild and crazy sometimes, but sometimes you're right. Even the stuff where you're like, that's a bit of a long shot. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm excited to hear everybody else's too. All right. Well, let's get down to the predicting. Uh, and and don't forget, folks, uh, as you heard yesterday on the predictions results show every year, we go back and check and we yeah. don't even we don't even let you forget what you predicted five years ago if you haven't checked in on it, <laughs> depending on who you are. All right. Let's start with you, Sarah Lane. Let's kick right into your predictions. What is your first one for 2018? Okay, first prediction, and this has a lot to do with the fact that I'm really into the HQ app right now. And when I say that, I've been into it for approximately one week because I only really knew about it a week or back in November. Five uh, to so, seven weeks, yeah, right? So, yeah, seven weeks now. And uh, if anybody is not familiar with it, it's like a live trivia game that gets pushed to your phone if you have notifications on iOS users only for now. And it's hosted by a real guy. And... Uh, from everything I can tell, he's really hosting this whole thing live uh, a, a couple times a day on the weekdays and once on the weekends. And it's really fun. And it's the, it, at first I was like, you know, this app is, you know, it's not going to be around much longer. And I still actually believe that, which is where my prediction comes in. But I think that Facebook is going to build its own HQ app version because Facebook is a uh, couple things going on, like trying to get into video as much as possible, experimenting with original content, not, it sort of seems like a soft launch. I'm not totally sure how that rollout is working, uh, but a lot of us know folks who are, who are making original content for the Facebook platform specifically. And Facebook, you know, loves the live. Facebook also has billions and billions of users. Now the HQ app, the last uh, round of trivia that I played yesterday, had 200,000 concurrent viewers playing. Of those, and they ask you 12 questions and then you know, you get eliminated when you get them wrong. You only have like a few seconds, so it goes really quick. Of those 200,000 players, including myself, 99 people 
one, meaning that they got all of them right. I was not one of those people because the questions got really weird and hard at the end. So you think, okay, that is crazy engagement and like such a good opportunity for brands uh, to like, you know, let's ask a question about uh, Taco Bell, right? Yeah, and then Taco right. Bell sponsors that question, right? And, 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 and people answer because they love trivia. This seems perfect for the Facebook platform, possibly more than any other platform I could think of. So that's my prediction. I love this. I think this is a great prediction. I think this is fantastic because where Facebook has gone now is where YouTube is going now and, and having with great consternation, the idea of monetizing things that aren't ad safe or ad valuable. And so you would think that something kind of one camera, fairly low rent or low production value would not be what they want. And yet there is the old standby uh, for ad friendly trivia since the fifties trivia has been so non uh, uh there's no clause you ever all the uh, stuff is approved ahead of time and if it doesn't have any kind of randomness of uh, 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 uh contestants saying stuff i think this is great i'm so jealous that i did not have this idea that was that's a brilliant 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 Here, here's the only thing i would say that i worry about with facebook or other large platforms getting in on this Oftentimes what happens is the best new ideas come from small places and HQ is a good example of this. Uh, even though these are, these are uh, former vine founder guys, they've, they've had their hands in sort of viral successful appy things before. Um, this is yet another one of those and that's great and all, but the concern would be that now the big 900 pound gorilla named Facebook would swoop in and go, Oh, that's a cool idea. We'll go ahead and do that. And it will immediately lose it's charm. Now that doesn't mean they wouldn't be successful with it. And by sheer numbers, clearly they would be, but it would bum me out a little bit. So your predictions, I think your prediction's dead on. And I think it's a great prediction, but it bums me out that they will yet again, somebody huge will swoop in and say, take something, something small and turn it into their own thing. And well, and, and yeah, yeah, Facebook, there are, there's a lot of evidence of Facebook doing that, uh, copying smaller apps with, with, a lot of times not much success at all. Although you can look at something like Instagram stories, which if you look at numbers is trouncing snap and that was a direct ripoff. I at first was like, you know, cause the, the host of HQ Scott can't remember his last name off the top of my head, but he's very beloved. And so I was like, yeah, so they can't really recreate it. They'd have to buy the app mm -hmm. because they need him. But I don't really think that's true. I think Facebook cares less about that and more about just sheer numbers of people who like the concept of HQ rather than- I'm gonna go ahead HQ and give you partial credit ahead of time if they buy HQ. Like you're, you're, you're basically hedging there and I think that's fine to say they'll either buy it where you get half credit but you're you're making a you're making a claim, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you being bold and saying, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't think they will. I don't think they will. This is where my whole thought process started, mm -hmm. but I arrived at a different place altogether. I so, wonder yeah. if somebody else doesn't buy. Well, and that, that's the funny thing is that you would think Twitter would be the place that makes a little bit more sense in in that they have a a, a platform that plugs directly more into that idea and as they definitely Facebook see live them. video as their future right but these guys already sold to, 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 to twitter once and we don't know exactly how happy they were with how all that uh went or actually it could work the other way too it'd be like oh we have a relationship we know these guys right yeah maybe hmm. Hmm. jen do you have any thoughts on this i'm kind of interested in the facebook angle because the facebook it would be less cool so you might lose all the young hip people playing now, but then you also get all of the moms and moms have money. So it could still work out for the brands. Yeah. All right, Sarah, what is prediction number two? Prediction number two. This is actually, I'm kind of dredging up something that was, that was a big rumor back in the summer, back in June. And that was the idea that Slack was going to get gobbled up by somebody that was a bigger mm -hmm. company than Slack, but who was it going to be? And the big rumor was Amazon and then there were a lot of think pieces, people saying, well, I don't know, you know, does Amazon really care about that? And is it really a good fit? And maybe it's Google. So then I got to thinking, you know what, because I use Slack so much and from the, from day one, um, as my Slack channels have grown, you know, sometimes it's work related and sometimes it's just sort of, you know, futzing around related with friends and sending each other silly memes and that sort of thing. I still find the service, it's very dear to me. It's a big part of my day every day. It's just one of my favorite places to be. 
even though it's kind of buggy at times, we all know that, uh, but, and I mostly use my desktop, uh, use it a, as a Mac app. But anyway, Slack is, I, I've been terrified for a while now that it's going to get bought and it's going to change. Rather than get better, it's going to get worse. I'm going to go ahead and say that Amazon will buy Slack in 2018. And the reason is not so much that I think Amazon wants this so badly, but there are just a few things that I could see working really well. Um, for example, you know when you load up Slack and it has those funny quotes, you know, yeah. like sometimes the bear eats you for your friends at Slack or whatever and you can customize them. It's like, okay, well, what if you just get like a little, you know, like flash sale on Amazon type thing. Mm. Uh, there's like lots of different ways that Amazon could, could, could kind of push its store me. onto people <laughs> that are using it uh, in many in in many ways. You know, kind of on a development side, which Amazon could also be interested in. But I but I I weighed this based on okay, if I had to choose between Amazon and Google, you know, why wouldn't it be Google? And I just think that if Google really wanted to take Hangout seriously, and it does. But really take it seriously, it would just make Hangouts behave more like Slack than Hangouts already does, even though they have a lot of similar features right now. So I know it's a long shot because this was already a rumor that didn't happen, but I'm resurrecting it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's not like that hasn't happened before. Well, Verizon did buy Yahoo eventually. Here's, here's a thought. So Amazon bought Twitch and everybody, and I mean everyone I knew that used Twitch at the time, was terrified that this meant a big corporate takeover and it meant all sorts of changes and it meant the the amazonation of the service and the opposite happened what instead we got were more stable servers uh better bandwidth deeper pockets way better way more money to spend on the service itself and they've been ramping up additional stuff the prime sub thing was genius if you have amazon prime you have a single sub you can give it to anybody you want on twitch that helps streamers that helps twitch and it helps amazon everyone wins across the board so they've shown themselves to be good stewards there it hasn't been very long so i don't know if we can make the full ruling yet it's only been what a year or something maybe a little more so i'm all for this i think uh, amazon has at least shown a propensity to make things better not worse when they get them under their wing and I would look at Audible. I would look at Comixology. I would look at a handful of other properties they purchased. IMDb is another great one. They've leveraged it for their own services, uh, like their own Prime Video and you being able to pause and read up on everything that's happening. It's pulling all that data from IMDb. But they haven't done the thing to IMDb everybody was worried about, which was change it or ruin it or whatever your definition of it is. So of all of the big wigs, I would prefer to see do it. So far, the track record for me is best example over there at Amazon. So I'm all with all with her on this. Uh, and, and they've shown that they've got their buying pants on, you know, not only Twitch, but also a bigger acquisition with Whole Foods last year. I, I, I would say uh, this is a great idea. Uh, and, and I would think that they would angle it more toward their AWS clients than they would their uh, uh, store clients. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, you know, it is already a free service. Maybe you could do an ad enriched version that gets you some of the uh, uh stuff but i think for them they basically just want to tack have another reason why you're buying server space through aws and here's another way that you can sync up your whole team yeah it's part of the enterprise package and that is something amazon needs to bolster so that's another point in the in the favor of this and i think to you know for anybody who's sort of like yeah but is that going to happen in 2018 well the reason that i feel like you know it's not so much a shot in the dark is that Slack has raised a lot of venture capital. Um, and anytime a company is sitting on a huge valuation, a potential valuation, uh, based on a bunch of investors who really want their money back and then some, uh, you know, usually this isn't far off. So yeah, I mean, we're at the end of 2017. I don't, I don't think it's, it's that far fetched to say that, that, uh, that Slack is going to have to go whether they want to or not go to, go to, you know, Go to a nice high bidder. Either, yeah, it's either it's either time to marry them off or let them uh, 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 send them uh, on their way to set up their own little tree. Yeah, and make my Prime subscription a benefit to me using Slack. In other words, that's one of the things I like about the Amazon deal is I feel like my Prime thing goes further. Um, sometimes it goes up too, but it goes further. And maybe nice further with Slack would be some of the premium Slack for uh, features because I'm a Prime subscriber without me having to go all in on a Slack subscription. 
Absolutely. Justin Robert Young, you are up now on the hot seat. What is your prediction for 2018? I believe that a driverless self-driving car, meaning a car that is allowed to operate without a human in it, will be approved and run in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 2018. Well, I mean, you got to get a little more specific because there are driverless cars approved and running in Pittsburgh right now as a test by Uber. Without a driver. Right now, they all have to have a driver in yeah, them. Absolutely. So you're saying nobody will be in these things. There'll nobody be a will be for anybody to call. I believe that in this year, I don't know if they'll be callable. I'm not saying that, that you'll be able to get one. I think that they will be approved to run without a driver on board, without a driver to prove that this is possible. I think that this is the year we've seen enough cities run tests with drivers in them at some point, And why not this year? You have to start acclimating the roadways to have no you know, way. Waymo says they're going to do this this year in Tempe, Arizona. Mm. That could be your place. Well, all right. But my, 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 my prediction is specifically with Pittsburgh. All right. <laughs> I think, I think that that's going to happen. I think Uber will be the company to do it, but wait, all right. So, so Waymo says that they're going to do it in Tempe. I mean, they say a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Dan, what do you, what do you think? Has Justin lost his mind here? No, this is the year. Everyone says 2020, but I think 2018 is the year that at least a city, I don't know if it's Pittsburgh, but um, it makes sense because of the testing that's going on there now. But 2018 is the year that some city somewhere has free roaming robot cars. Well, not free roaming, <laughs> but you know, somewhat uh, untethered to a man robot cars. Uh, and that will be this year. Why not? 2018. Let's do it. Let's embrace it. I know you didn't hear me, but I said, Jen. <laughs> So I predict Scott may be changing his name to Jed pretty soon. Uh, it's a great name, let's be honest. There's, there's a lot of us, but it's still a great name. Um, <laughs> it, it, this doesn't make the news a lot up here. Are there cities in the states that are offering incentives, and that's why places like Tempe and Pittsburgh are in your predictions for this? Uh, no, my, 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 my prediction is based around the idea that uh, Pittsburgh has a very good relationship with, with the Carnegie Mellon School, which is a sp- a specifically on the East Coast, a, a good engineering institution. Uh, the mayor and state legislature has been more welcoming. Uh, that they have, they have wanted to continue to rebrand themselves as not just a Rust Belt city, uh, and, and they are leaning heavily into the kind of technology sector to do it. So that that's my my prediction is it may be almost nothing more than a a a trial that literally gets let lets it run around once a day you know so they can continue to get uh, more testing but at some point somebody's got to do it and that climate seems right to me to make a prediction. I was going to predict, and I I didn't end up doing it. I was going to predict someone will launch a non-test version of autonomous car services and be pressured into suspending it because they didn't get approval. Mm. Ah, so keep yeah. An eye on it. I mean, you never know. Maybe they're already running them and they've uh, uh, paid their employees ten thousand dollars to delete all the data. <laughs> <laughs> Shall uh, we move on to number two? Number two. All right, this one. It's a triple decker. Are you ready? I'm ready. Fox, 21st Century Fox is bought by Disney. Of course, the the deal reported by CNBC. So this would not be the television stations. This would be the movie studio and the IP. Disney, next year, is bought by Apple. What? (laughs) What in the heck? And that's only part two of three? (laughs) Double-deckered. Disney buys Fox. Disney gets bought by Apple. There's another thing that's kind of out there periodically, uh, specifically with the fact that Disney is facing some real problems uh, uh, in terms of uh, their like television uh, stations, ESPN, uh, uh, not the least of which, has become uh, at once their heavy hitter, now a major albatross for them. Uh, they are going to launch another service, but you know Apple has kind of pussyfooted around the content game for a little while. This would be them stepping in in a real major way, uh, uh, obviously they have a close relationship with Disney ever since uh, the the Pixar acquisition with Steve Jobs. And then I said triple decker. Here it is. Wolverine will appear in a Marvel movie 
next year. Three Marvel movies coming out. Uh, 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 Infinity War, Black Panther, and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think that with this Fox deal done, we see some kind of cameo or after the credits sting with Wolverine. Different you going to go all the way and say it's Hugh Jackman or a different? Yeah. I want to know what? I feel like I'm, I'm leveraged within an inch of my life. I want to give myself, I want to give myself some leeway of them <laughs> recasting Wolverine. Although I think that would be kind of a bummer. Yeah. I, right. I don't think Hugh Jackman does it, but maybe you get some young guy that's set up to be the new Wolverine and it gives obviously uh, Disney back control of their IP in a way that they haven't had. So great time to reboot him, put him on the, the Avengers, have him be your carry through character to the next generation of, of Marvel heroes. I don't think this is that crazy. And to your point about Apple, who else has the cash to do it? I'm not saying they will. And I think you're probably wrong, <laughs> but Apple has the cash to do it. I don't think they'd ever do it, but they could do it if they wanted to. Sarah, yeah. uh, would you like to explain to Justin why he's crazy or shall I? Well, uh, I mean, you know, we could flip for it, but since you asked, uh, I'll, I'll take a stab. Uh, so, all right. So let me get this straight. So 20th, 21st Century Fox gets bought by Disney. Yes. Right. And you're saying in that 12 month period, yes. you know, where, you know, these deals have to get approved and, and there's a lot, a lot of complicated things going behind the scenes and board seats and, and all sorts of financial stuff that in the same 12 months, less than that, really, yes. then Disney will get gobbled up by Apple. Yes. And you find that all that time period to to be at all possible aggressive, given the aggressive. fact of how business works aggressive though it might be and <laughs> and maybe this would make more sense if i had made this proclamation a month ago um <laughs> as opposed to now at the end of the year so we have no idea what's happening in, in december but it is my uh I, I granted extraordinarily aggressive and it is predicated on the concept that these ideas if not frameworks for these deals are closer than we know now to being uh, uh, being done. The fact that Bob Iger has stayed on as the CEO of Disney, despite uh, uh, saying he was going to retire, I think three or four years ago uh, and, and forcing out some of his, his underlings uh, who would be the next uh, CEO seems to me, if you're going to get conspiratorial to say that maybe there are, larger acquisitions that are taking time we've heard rumors about disney and fox for two years now uh and and the cnbc uh report was kind of looked at widely as them putting a final uh word out there that that hey they are going to sell all this off if anybody else wants to uh stop the wedding before it goes down with disney now is the time to do it so that to me suggests that the 20th century fox and the disney thing is close that they are talking there more along the lines of of, of of numbers and those finalization points than something else than than it being out there the disney apple thing uh yeah you're right listen it would it, it is it is absolutely bonkers to suggest that this could all happen within a calendar year but go big or go home yeah uh, no, I, I, no fox buying disney is a reasonable prediction or i'm sorry disney buying fox is a reasonable prediction wolverine appearing in a marvel movie is an aggressive prediction just because yeah. of the logistics but if if your first one happens then that one could happen apple's never buying disney disney's not a content company disney is is a megalith they, they own theme parks they own financial arms like this is not something apple wants to get into apple might buy part of fox they might buy a content piece of somebody else. Maybe they'd even buy a content piece of Disney, although I can't see Disney parting with it. Uh, but Apple loves to sit on its cash. They don't like to spend it. Yeah. That's true. That's, true. That's why they have so much damn cash. They're just yeah, that's why their butts are uncomfortable too. Although I do but, just just even though I I know it's I know it's crazy, but it's like there is a weird part of me that likes the idea of Apple owning Disneyland. <laughs> And I don't know why, <laughs> because be most Disney people iPhone. would vehemently disagree with me. But it's like if Disneyland ha and Disney World too, and you know, the, I don't know Disney uh, theme parks around the world. Um, if it had to go to anybody, somehow I like the idea of it going to Apple. A lot of Beats headphones on the rides and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I, look, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Apple uh, is likes to sit on its cash, 
But what if it likes to sit on its cash so it can make deals like this? Deals it that does it, 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 it uses its cash to buy startups, to buy technology. Maybe it buys beats, sure. Maybe it buys a content arm. I don't think it buys all of Disney. I just I okay. Know. Well, the content arm is interesting. It is possible that the entire streaming bit, the entire uh, effort on the outside of what they're doing with Marvel and Disney and theaters and what they're doing with all their other properties, ESPN and everything else, maybe a piece of this, just a piece of it could be. Disney doesn't part with that though. I don't. They don't, do they? No, 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 no. no. You, you would, you would have to buy Disney. Yeah. And, and look, Disney, Disney has been on the block before. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm sure. to buy I, I'm not against that. That part of your 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 prediction is not unbelievable. That that someone could potentially buy Disney. I just don't think it's that. <laughs> All right, Jen, you are on prediction number one. Oh man, this is going to seem so tame comparatively, <laughs> but I'm going to start with the gaming prediction because, of course, I have to. So I'm going to do a quick summary of where we are right now with the Xbox One. So far, they've ditched the Kinect. It's really dead this time. They swear it's not coming back, thankfully. Uh, it's been years now since they've publicly distanced themselves from their initial DRM scheme, which was terrible. It involved constant online checks. They were going to kind of limit how you could play pre-owned games if you could play them at all. They've added two hardware revisions. There is the Xbox One S and the One X, which was out in November. And they've added the service called Play Anywhere, basically cross-buy. So you can, you know, you buy it once, you can play it on your Windows 10 PC, you can play it on your console, you have the same save states, you have the same gamer score. It's kind of handy that way. Everybody got that? Got Everyone's it. Everyone's up to date? Yeah. Excellent. It All right. It only exists in my iPhone 10. Got it. <laughs> yes. So I think the One X is the last Xbox. Mm. I think that, uh, that that's my big swing. I think they're going to just push everybody to the PC. They're all in on Windows 10. With Windows 10, they get the stuff that they gave up earlier. To get the Play Anywhere benefit, you have to buy their digital copies. You have to buy it from the Windows 10 store, which eliminates Steam as a competitor. And I think that's part of their end game here. And now anyone who wants an Xbox One, they've got three options to choose from. But that's not going to be their main focus. They're not going to be sad if you decide, oh, I'm just going to buy a gaming PC and run Windows 10 and buy things from the Windows 10 store. Now, interestingly, this is one of your predictions, Scott Johnson, is it not? It is. Um, it's Mine's slightly different in that I think 2018 is the year they dis they have to make the decision. I think that the Xbox One X launching, launching with no discernible mega seller launch title is weird and some would even say disgraceful and a, a bit of a failure um as the x is kind of their their big last stab at this generation to say look we, we need to be back to where we were or get in the good graces of our core gamers again they haven't been able to do it so far so my thinking is this is the year where Sachin Adela sits down with people on the xbox team and says all right look we can either go all in and make this a really important part of Microsoft. And if we do, you've got to convince me why we should, why this should be a giant profit arm for us moving forward, or why we shouldn't roll this away and do something else. And by that, I don't think they can do it all at once. I don't think they can just make an announcement. I think it takes them a number of years to sort of phase things out or change things. But I do not think that we're looking at another 10, 15 years of Xbox unless they decide to go all in. Because right now it feels half aid. It feels like they're not really in it to win it. There are people on the Xbox team that are and that are super stoked about what's happening and doing the best that they can. But the corporate culture around that device has changed. And I don't think from the top down, they're as interested in seeing that thing succeed. So yes, similar prediction, but I just think this is the year they make that decision and we may not even hear about it. I think this is an internal thing where they'll finally make that choice and let it either die on the vine or go all in. And I'm actually kind of both ways on that. They've got the money to get behind it if they want to and really take it by the horns. But I'm not sure they will because up till now they've shown that they, you know, can kind of give a crap. So Wait, so I don't know. But that's where I'm that's where my head's on on that. When you say go all in, you mean go all in on gaming specifically. Yeah, or or, or, or get to a place. Get basically just get back to where they were with the 360. Get back to a place. And I don't just mean it's acceptance or it's popularity but them innovating and creating an interface and a user base or a user access to that device that is not 
hamstrung by poor desi poor design decisions and some other things. Uh, invest in real development so that actual big first party, not available on other platform games, come out on it exclusively. To quit relying on just making sure there's a Halo every three years, and and really go in that in the direction that Sony has. They're just not gonna they're not gonna make it right now. They're just treading water and they're doing it feels intentional because they just aren't putting everything behind it. They clearly have the resources. They have really smart people. They have the ability to hire the best people in the industry, but they're not doing it. And I think it's because they might be getting out. Well, th th this was the rumor with with Sachin Adela when he first came on, right? That 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 he was going to spin off Xbox because he didn't see Xbox as as a a, a, hu a future pl uh, player for Microsoft. Sure, a spin off could be interesting. It's a whole different conversation probably I, about. I still where feel that they're going to turn it into a platform like that's integrated into a larger microsoft ecosystem but like it you know xbox as a platform won't necessarily mean a physical box it just will be whatever gaming entertainment aspect that they do you yeah. so, smart glass they maybe yeah smart glass what was the other one for windows um live um, windows or whatever game, like, game, uh, like, like this. They've tried that to one do died too. Yeah, but all of so this is the thing that the Xbox has above all those is it has a built in audience that they can carry over. A and, smaller, smaller and smaller and more dwindling audience every day. Well, That's and Jen, you pointed yeah. out at the beginning of all of this uh, that they are pushing these things into Windows so they don't have to give up on Xbox. What, what could make all this true is they just stopped making the machines. I mean, Jen, do you think? They will make a surface gaming device to sort of carry on the torch for people. Uh, I'm not sure. I am predominantly a console gamer, but with the Play Anywhere thing, when I eventually upgrade my editing system, it will be Windows 10. I will probably start buying Play Anywhere games to get those exclusives that aren't on my PS4, that aren't on the Switch. But that doesn't buy me an Xbox. <laughs> that that keeps me in the Microsoft ecosystem, and it makes the console irrelevant. Yeah, and I, I think they might still want to make a console-like device. At which point do you call it Surface? Do you call it Xbox? Do you call it the Xbox Surface? Well, what what was the Xbox One when it was announced? Point. The point of that device was to be what you're saying. It was supposed to be this connected to their ecosystem. Uh, music was on there. All this other stuff was attached to it. It had connect support, voice support. It ran through to your cable box. So it was a, it was a nice compliment to that. It had snap out Skype chat with people. Like they were going for this crazy online all the time voice activated thing. And gamers yeah, but the, out, didn't want it. So well, the part, part of the problem is you're selling it to the wrong audience, right? You don't go to you don't you don't go to an organization where everyone just needs a commuter car and then try to unload a bunch of you know oversized suvs and pickup trucks because that's not what they want now if you were taking those exact same products and say oh you work in oil and gas or you work in forestry or you work in construction and you need a truck or an suv that's a more receptive audience i think that was what they wanted to do and they were pitching it to the wrong audience yeah. i mean we we you know it, it so I still think it'll be a platform. Oh, all right. Let's move on to your second prediction, Jen. What do you got for us? Oh, uh, my second prediction, because I have to, I'm just obliged to wave the flag every once in a while. I think that Canada will take a stronger stance in 2018 on net neutrality. I don't know whether this will be the year we finally pass a bill, whether it's private member or not, or whether we give the CRTC more teeth to enshrine it but they have already spoken out saying we're on this we're, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this we're gonna keep doing what we're doing i'm a little nervous because the crtc back in 2011 also agreed that okay zero rating is bad but we're gonna let you start charging like usage tiers so shame on them for that uh but it also depends a lot on how the new NAFTA negotiations go, because we could get a lot of pushback from the Americans on this, as we've kind of already seen out in the news. Well, you know, it's funny. You look at India. India has one of the strongest government-led net neutrality pushes, saying you, you can't do paid pri prioritization, uh, you can't do blocking, period. Uh, Canada could try to copy that, but you're right. Are they going to be pressured by the US, or is it better for Canada to hold off on this and kind of kick the can down the road to see if a different FCC comes into office four to eight years from now? 
because there are parties in Canada who want kind of zero ratings the wrong word but it's kind of that idea a fast lane for Canadian content which so far the CRTC has said ah that's not a good idea let's not do that <laughs> so it would be the equivalent of making a radio station play a certain percentage of Canadian content you'd give a Basically, fast lane yeah you'd give yeah. a fast lane to that no it makes perfect sense and then with that whole weird Netflix deal earlier in 2017 about, oh, yeah, we're going to spend this much money on Canadian content, even though they're not taxed for that. But there's no real specifics on how they will spend that money on Canadian content. <laughs> so it's all these promises in the air. And I think 2018, they're finally going to put some stuff on paper for net neutrality in Canada. Well, the, the, the one thing that you can say both in, the Can in Canada and the United States is that you're starting to see these issues become more and more uh, uh to the forefront and uh, uh as a rule politicians don't do anything until it uh, imperils their their phony baloney job so uh, uh as soon as people start saying i am voting against you because you are doing that or these kinds of things and people mean it then uh, I, I will say uh a, this very dented can will continue to be <laughs> down this long and lonesome road well, and, and, and honestly, you know, what I would love to see Canada do is take some steps towards opening up the ISP market, uh, which which is opened up more than it used to be. It used to be, you know, your Rogers or your Shaw. And that's it. Thanks. Bye. You know, maybe you got some DSL. Good luck mm -hmm. with that. Um, it, do, do you foresee anything like that coming along? Uh, like Rogers, Shaw, Bell. Those are, are like three main names, uh, like tech savvy is pretty good, but they're buy from Rogers and all these smaller ones, they buy from Bell. So thankfully, CRTC said, ah, you guys have to knock it off with a deep packet inspection and, and this shaping thing, because otherwise, what's the difference of buying from these wholesalers? But it's really tough. We are not a large population. We are very spread out. I live in Toronto and it is only by moving that I went somewhere where I could get more than like. 20 megabit upload <laughs> and it was only by moving I was able to like get off DSL and get onto cable just because it's not in every area and companies are not going to spend that money on not a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, if we are ready for Scott's second prediction, uh, since you guys had a merged first prediction, uh, let's, let's, Sorry, let's Scott. move on. Oh, no, it's totally good. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. It was a fun thing to talk about. So here's my take. Um, we've all got some sort of uh, voice-activated device in our homes now, that meaning people around us in this uh, episode. But there's also plenty of people out there in the world who are finally doing it. We've all started to adopt this idea that we want to talk to our technology and have it take care of some things for us, whether that be Echoes or, you know, Google Homes or whatever it may be. I think we're getting into a weird place where once again, format wars are going to start to be a thing. And it happens with, you know, everything else, operating systems on desktops, on mobile. Um, it doesn't matter. Everybody wants you in their little place. And that's no different here. I think 2018 is the year for a very disruptive, uh, loud and seemingly out of nowhere, we'll get some sort of uh, Arduino-based or some kind of simple hardware-based voice assistant device that will be using uh, open source software and will end up just making everything else look bad and, and create kind of a, a choice that we don't have right now, which is for something that isn't necessarily tied or so tied to the companies that currently have them. It won't be so wrapped up like the Echo is in Amazon's ecosystem or uh, Apple's upcoming device with its stuff, obviously, and even Google with its, you know, while a little bit more open, still kind of locked down. This the thing will be open to everybody. It'll be hackable. It'll be tweakable. Uh, you'll be able to do all kinds of stuff. There'll be a big group of people working on it, and we can all have this new choice. Now, it may not be the most consumer-friendly or front-facing, but I think a lot of us, meaning people like us, the tech savvy out there, would jump on such a thing. And it will get us closer to the ultimate idea, which is the Star Trek computer isn't branded. It's just a computer and you get stuff done with it. And I don't have to worry about loyalty to any particular brand. So this is my Star Trek hope, not my Blade Runner hope. I mean, yeah, you know, except the Federation. That's a brand. <laughs> you know, wear loyalty to that. 
sure, but they're the, the the utopian ideals of Star Trek are they're not making money on it. There is no currency being uh, sure. passed around. Yeah. It's just Un unyielding better. loyalty to the military, and everything will be fine. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I real I realize this has some political holes in it. I'm just saying, <laughs> of those two options, I, I would I rather have like a giant Blade Runner style mega corporation that runs everything, or this more open style thing. I'm absolutely moving toward the open thing. So I just think 2018 is the year where we start to at least hear about it, because up till now it's been like mum from that part of the community. Well, let me let me, let me ask you a, a question. So you're you're looking at more of a, a Linux a Linux four voice operating system. Sure, device. sure. If okay. we want, to well, I think more I, Firefox sounds like more what he's talking about because because it's not an operating system. It's cross platform. Uh, and it and it's open for every. It's it's developed in order to make a good thing. Yeah, right? and you have apps on every every phone would have apps. Every computer would have you know uh, ways to do it. Browser based stuff like it, there wouldn't be anything like. Well, sorry if you if you have the uh, the Echo, you can't do Apple Music. Or sorry if you have the Apple thing, you can't do Spotify. Or or whatever all the current limitations are because everyone's got their loyalties in different places. Those would just disappear because we would not only have a more open approach to what services supported, but even those that don't, we would come up with cool open source technology to get around those hoops. So instead of it being hard to pull in Apple Music the way it kind of is uh, on your Echo, there would be better ways of doing that. I don't know what those are, but those would be some of the benefits and advantages. So you could still have the services you love and like and are loyal to, but you would have this more omnipotent you know, voice controlled thing that worked in your car and your house and your everything. And she was everywhere or he, whichever one you choose will be everywhere you want them to be all the time. What about the corporations though, that uh, have a vested interest in you not being able to do things like this? Like, because give me an example. Like, Samsung, Apple. Yeah. Amazon, like, like, Google. you know, any big company who was like, well, hold on a second. Like if you can get all that stuff, like we're, you know, uh, you know, Apple, for example, is, uh, is uh, you know, Apple Music is a direct competitor to Spotify. So, you know, neither company really wants everybody to, you know, have the two services play nicely. They want you to choose. Of course. It's the operating system that decides whether you get the hooks into it. So being open source is, I mean, maybe you're right. Somebody will figure out a workaround for that. But I would imagine that Samsung and Apple and Google will all figure out how to block that workaround. Probably, but by workaround, I don't mean, okay, imagine this. Imagine if we thought of Bluetooth from my phone to my Echo as a workaround. That's playing my Apple Music account, no problem, all day long, whatever I need it to do. It works. Now, that's not the device. That's not me talking to the Echo and saying, hey, please play me this, this playlist on my Apple Music account. So it is limited, but there's still that kind of workaround. And I'm not saying that's limited to that. I'm just saying... Something that would just fence it all in more so that everybody could do something, whether it was limited or not, just less of this like, like Amazon will has a Spotify app for the Echo, or Amazon doesn't, but Spotify has an app for the Echo ecosystem, um, because right now those two companies can benefit each other, but they don't have an Apple one because Apple doesn't benefit from having this competition, even though Amazon's got their own music service, they're not, they don't feel like they're competing with Spotify or the other way around. It feels beneficial for whatever reason for them, but not for Apple and Amazon or not. But Apple's not going to let somebody else's voice service do the same thing and take and get hooks into their operating system. That's I, that's. I completely agree. I just think there's ways around it. I think that the coming revolution of hackery business will 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 something will happen. We'll figure out a way. I don't know what it is. I don't have a good answers for this. But there's gonna be there's gonna be some better middle ground with like superior voice activation and superior recognition and, and translation and all the other things that we think we're getting good service from right now. That stuff will be so much better that we'll be okay with a few of these workarounds, even if it's Siri, just no, launch no. Mork, and then then you just launch Mork, and Mork has all of the open source voice stuff. Yeah. yeah. So here's my only thing. I have no doubt that as the uh, as these devices both get a more popular and be more siloed, there will be a want for a true open source version. Where I fall away is that it will be either easy or popular. Like I, I think that those two leaps to me are, are 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 too far. Specifically in this market, where yes, there is siloing. But by and large, people have been more willing to play with each other at this stage of the game than I would expect. Like, uh, Sarah, you got the, the, the new Sonos one, right? 
Mm-hmm. And that currently has uh, the Amazon voice assistant and will apparently soon have other Google voices. Home, and then Sonos sort of vaguely said, and probably Siri soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, if, if you think of it in terms of what, what it has now and the potential rather than being connected to one of these services, Sonos was like, we're not even going to compete. We're just going to like hook into as many as possible. Yeah. I like this bold prediction Scott's making in the sense of we all want to cross platform, whether it's open source or not. Uh, open source is just a method of getting to it. We want a cross platform voice assistant that we can get used to and have all of our settings on and not have to think, well, wait a minute, am I talking to a Google device or an Amazon device or an Apple device? Uh, Cortana is that, you just can't launch it by default uh, on most devices. You, you can do it on some Android devices actually, but you certainly can't do it on iOS uh, and you can't do it on a lot of other things. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit, I will admit it's a bit of a pipe dream. It's more like what, it's more of a way of thinking about it that I wish would change because yeah. Nobody's saying that the internet should be controlled by anyone in particular. Well, <laughs> some, <laughs> know, but, but, uh, but you know, you, it's not like we're in AOL's internet anymore. And I want to jump over to Apple's internet or somebody else's internet. I wish voice activated data, uh, pulling type technology was more ubiquitous like that, that, w that it was like the internet in that we can just tap into that thing and it isn't branded. It isn't, have to have some loyalty attached to it. It's just a way to access stuff. And then it opens up so many cool possibilities and, and nobody's complaining that uh, I'm, well, maybe they're complaining, but I can use Google Chrome to open apple.com and not Safari if I want to. And I can use edge to open up Firefox. To you can't make it the default browser, but yeah, I can do that across the board on all these different things. They all want me in their stuff, but they can't. Well, why? Well, because the mindset is that was never cool to do. And when you did try all of us fought back, I think we're going to get to a place where that voice stuff will get so good, partially propelled by the proprietary systems because they're going to get better and better. But we're going to get to that that breaking point and go, well, why are we? Why am I have to swear allegiance to you or you or you when really I just want this to be like the thing? This is the internet. This is a service, and and quit trying to break it up like that. That is a great example of the kind of predictions that I historically make. <laughs> Grand movements that I think are going to happen. And what happens to me, I'm not saying this is going to happen to you, Scott, but what happens to me by way of transitioning into my own prediction is that I end up predicting something that if it happens, doesn't happen for five years. So my first prediction for 2018 is going to be short. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be easily measurable. And it's going to happen by the end of 2018. Bitcoin's going to pass $15,000. Didn't it just pass 10? Yep. Okay. All right. So it's not going to double. Yeah. You can call me a coward if you want, Sarah. It's fine. I'm making an easy <laughs> prediction for once in my life. I just, hmm. just clarifying. Just clarifying. So fifteen thousand. But did, but uh, would you say that there there would be a, a sharp correction or a downturn sometime immediately after? Well, not even immediately, like but that, sometime in twenty eight. My prediction wrong. <laughs> No, no. What I'm saying is, it could totally pass fifteen thousand, and then totally like everyone's yeah, like, "No, oh. you're right. I, it doesn't have to stay at fifteen thousand for the rest of the year. Once it passes it, yeah. uh, it could go down to zero. But at some point in 2018, it's going to pass fifteen thousand dollars, and then I'm going to buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a, uh, well, that's a nice. In all seriousness, brag, like, but okay. I th I think <laughs> Some of us I do. Here, here's the, here's, let, let me put some stakes on my prediction. I think Bitcoin's going to keep going up. I think it really is going to keep marching forward, and 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 it could probably end up well beyond fifteen thousand in a year from now. You know, it's funny. So a friend uh, of mine who shall remain nameless uh, has eight, and he or she was like, "So how do I like cash out of this?" And I was like. I don't know one of the exchanges <laughs> there's a lot of them and just give them to me i'll take care of it yeah i was like, just just hand them over i'll launder them for you no but 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 they but they were like yeah but i mean i don't want you know uncle sam to know about it and i was like well but, that's breaking the law then. yeah right. i was like you got these bitcoins like a million years ago when <laughs> it meant nothing to you like take your free money and shut up yeah 
<laughs> yeah, it's well, like it's, saying, uh, how, so how are you going to pay me your salary? I, I don't want Uncle Sam to find out. I don't want to pay taxes, though. <laughs> I mean, come on. Now that Bitcoin has reached 10 grand per, I don't know, it's funny. But I, I mean, honestly, Tom, I, it sounds crazy, but $10,000 sounded real crazy to me and it happened. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and, and here's my, I'm going to fall into my more typical trap then on my second prediction. Uh, by the end of 2018, this is more of a hope, I think, than a prediction. But I'm going to predict that a viable replacement for passwords will be launched by major tech companies. So in other words, like the FIDO Alliance, it's going to be more than one tech company uh, combining on a on a major launch that uh, a push to get people to say hey re no more passwords use this not saying whether it'll be successful in that uh but we will finally get that big push beyond just the launch of an alliance like fido that says we're looking into it we've, we've got some options we've got you know yubi keys and this is going to be like all right sites adopt this now uh, maybe while you're there and they're making that alliance, make them align for the voice activated thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a little, a little uh, pork belly, uh, something in the, in your bill there. That's all. Just add that alongside. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the idea though, of a unified strategy across the industry regarding security should be a priority. So if your prediction doesn't come true, uh, this year and then not the next year and then the next year, I think the industry is doing itself a huge disservice considering where we are today in terms of security and the mishmash that is two-factor and not two-factor and my stuff's encrypted this way, but their stuff's encrypted that way and all the problems and breaches we've had lately, like now is the time to make that a priority. I'm totally with Tom on this. Fido Alliance was launched in February, 2013. It's been almost five years now. Too long. Yeah. They got to come with something. It's so, a bubble. Y yes, and... Uh, it's the polite way of disagreeing these days. Uh, uh, who wants to make sure that they're the the ones that make this happen? Like, like where, where, where is beyond the fact that I think we all agree that it's probably better if we have a new baseline way of interacting with our data. Where who makes the money from it? Well, and and that's why it's taken so long, right? I mean, you're absolutely right. Is because, because Yahoo came out with with a one login a long time ago, but everybody's like, yeah, sure, all the data goes through Yahoo servers. <laughs> no, thank you. Facebook fa with 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 the Facebook login has been fairly successful, but on, at the same time, only with sites who are like, well, I guess we don't mind sharing a bunch of data with Facebook. So this is where the pressure of Fight Alliance was launched with this idea of like, let's try to take that out of it and make a system that anybody can implement that works well for everybody uh, because we know we're all losing money if we don't do something better than passwords. Right. Yeah. I think, listen, it, it's uh, uh, it, it's needed. I think that it would be a tremendous amount of goodwill for these companies if they were able to come together. The question is now that, I mean, like, look, Apple Apple just sold a $1,000 phone that purports that, you know, hey, look, use this new technology to serve your passwords. And they could very easily say, hey, use this new technology to do this new thing, right? And we want to have everybody who uses a new Apple computer uh, use Face ID. And and that yeah, but then then the, you gotta have face ID on Windows. Then you gotta have face ID on everything. Like it has to be a universal system where people so I guess hear, something like Steve Gibson's Squirrel, where it's my, like it doesn't matter what device or OS you're using, this will work for you. My argument is is exactly that that th this is counter to that, and Apple's selling products based on it. That oh, if you well, want to secure Apple can be, yeah, but if websites and apps are using this other system to log in, Apple won't it won't matter. Uh, sure, I mean, but but we, we want this to be a big, like a a a industry. Listen, push. Apple doesn't run two factor authentication, and you can use it on iOS. Sure. Oh yeah. No, I'm. I, I'm all I, right. All right. I agree. I'm just saying. Listen, <laughs> uh, but but my my larger question here uh, is, and and we will see how it plays out because I do think that it is something that will we are at a fork in the road. Is is security a necessity, or is it a feature? And and I think that it will be a more archaic way of looking at it over the next 10 years to say, oh, yeah, we have a new fancy way for security to happen. We do need the the, the, the tide to rise 
everywhere on security immediately when you look at how common these breaches are. Yeah. yeah. But also, what common good is there from uniting on this particular front? I think there's a lot to be argued in favor of that. You know, maybe studying why the industry decides that, yeah, CD-ROMs are cool. We'll go with that. Bluetooth's cool. We'll stick with that. Wi-Fi standards are pretty good. We'll stick with that. But hey, we got this weird facial recognition thing for our new phone. It's our own. It's uh, proprietary. Nobody can touch it. Or we've got a cable nobody else uses, which is all very Apple stuff that I'm mentioning. Um, Coming together on something as ubiquitous and important across the board of security seems like a no-brainer to me. Jen, you seemed a little bit skeptical, perhaps, when I was describing my prediction. Oh, we can't hear you now either. <laughs> so skeptical, in fact. Yeah, she can't say anything. Can't say anything. <laughs> but it was such a ridiculous prediction. <laughs> she's speechless now. All right. Well, uh, we, we'll try to we'll try to get this fixed in a second. Uh, but uh, any wild card predictions that you want to throw out, one liners, before we wrap this up. An autonomous vehicle get will get in a major accident and put a lot of the self-driving, self-piloting, everything on hold. Yeah, yeah. Len, Len made that last year. I was actually oh, sort of thinking that uh, when uh, when uh, Justin was talking about um, the trial in Pittsburgh, just because I know Pittsburgh has a lot of bridges. So I was like, maybe a car, no one will be in it. So it'll be a self-driving car, but all completely uh, by itself. We'll just like go rogue and jump off a bridge. <laughs> and then we'll be like, it's the singularity. Like this all has to stop. Like these cars don't want to do this. And <laughs> I mean, look, there was a self-driving the trolley, <laughs> a self trolley in Vegas that got into an accident within five minutes of it launching. Right. And it was, yeah, but it was not, it was, uh, it got backed into by another truck while I was sitting there. So exactly. that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm saying. Different. Even, even now, we are changing the way we look at accidents with with self-driving cars. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, well, Scott Johnson, thank you for joining us. Uh, very quickly, uh, where can people find you in the new year? Well, uh, I'll be hoarding my Bitcoins and getting ready for the voice assistant revolution that's surely to come right over there at frogpants.com. And uh, lots of fun, goofy stuff happening before or in the early part of uh, 2018 before uh, we really truly get into the best prediction year ever, which should be 2020, given that everything you, you ever mentioned on DTNS seems to be tied to 2020 for some reason. I don't know why, but every time some CEO comes out and says, we're doing a thing by 2020 seems to always be in the paragraph of text. So amazing year. 2020. Very excited All for that. All the things are going to happen. It's, in just, it's the new year 2000. Is yeah, that, it really is. In the Justin year Robert Young, where will people be able to find you in the new year? You can find me at uh, twitter.com slash Justin R. Young. Uh, it's, it's a great place to follow my dumb writings. Excellent. I would call them <laughs> the smartest dumb writings you can follow online. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and Jen, can we hear you yet? I don't know. Can yes. you? Yes. 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 Okay, great. Uh, two places, uh, Twitter, Jen Cutter, that is Jen with two N's, and at openalpha.tv. Uh, folks, this is a bit of an anniversary. Uh, we are closing out the fourth year of Daily Tech News Show uh, with this episode. The next episode we do will we'll, we'll be bringing us into our fifth year of existence, and it's because you want us to keep doing it. And I was ridiculously thrilled when we first got back four years ago. I am stunned that people not only continue to support the show, but increase their support to make it better. Uh, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. You, you've, you've changed the way I think things can be done. Uh, and, and people look at our show and say, oh, well, hey, that's interesting. Look at what they're doing over there. And that's because of you. Uh, so thank you to everyone who supports us on patreon.com slash DTNS. Sarah, take us out. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is a weird show. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, the regular show is live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. And our website, of course, is dailytechnewsshow.com. That's, That's it for it. Daily Tech News Show in 2017. That's it. See you next year. This
This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Happy New Year. Boom. I was just like, hey, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's a, all right, all right, it's yeah, yeah, run. I love you. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Happy Bye. Thursday. Good show, Justin. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Yeah, Scott, that was awesome. You're good. I had fun as always. And actually, you and Jen having uh, combined predictions worked out great because then we had, could have a, a little longer, beefier conversation about that. Yeah, that worked out good, I think. I also think of all the predictions today, it's the one that, that could potentially be the biggest deal, like the biggest noisy thing in 2018. So we'll see. It's the hardest one to prove if they don't admit it. Yeah. But they might. They might. We have to look at other stuff like zooms and things and look at their pattern and how do they get out of stuff like that and whatever that is they'll probably do here all right uh goodbye people watching on video have a happy new year we'll see you tomorrow happy don't take new too much year. on tuesday